Welcome in, everyone, to Amon G. Carter Stadium in Fort Worth, Texas. You're on the UMC Health System Avalanche Journal postgame show. And, oh, my goodness gracious, Nick, we just got treated to some extraordinary football on a Saturday afternoon and evening <laughs> overtime, and Texas Tech gets a dramatic win over TCU. Yeah, Zach, I think we just watched probably the game of the year in college football this year without really any doubt. Uh, a three-overtime thriller that had just about everything that you could want in a football game. Uh, Texas Tech, you know, backs against the wall, bruised and bloodied. They managed to come up with a winning touchdown in the third overtime. Uh, an eight-yard touchdown pass from Seth Deggy to, to Alex Torres, who kind of came out of nowhere, to, the old veteran, <laughs> the, the old uh, sagey veteran to have a yes. huge performance. He caught that pure euphoria. I asked him, you know, what, what his feeling was. He said, I really honestly didn't even realize it was over. I thought we had to set back up and go after him again because that's just the kind of game that it was. Exactly. But, Storming out of the field, just so much going on in this game, but that was how it ended, just an incredible game. And, Nick, you know, we just talked about a word, resiliency. How many times did it look like TCU had put a bullet in Texas Tech and they weren't going to come back? I mean, there were shades of last year. You're sitting there waiting for the bottom to fall out, and they kept their composure. The offense was shut down at times by TCU, but, my goodness, they found a way and they got themselves back in the game, fought through a lot of adversity. Yeah, you know, and when he was done talking at the podium, I asked Seth Deggy, I said, could, could, the, could your team have won a game like this last year? And he, he just, he just kind of smiled and said no, uh, because that's exactly what it was. That they, they had to come back so many times. And Austin Zuzalek said, uh, I'm sorry, Cody Davis said, this is the most emotional attack in the NFL we've been a part of. They were down 17-7 and right. they were not playing well. When they had to, at the end of the first half, two quick drives to score touchdowns. Late in the game, the offense stalls in the third quarter come up with two huge scores, then they'd take a 10-point lead with four minutes to go. Yeah, and you, know, you think you think in ball game. You're thinking they have it wrapped up. Well, there's what we get for thinking. <laughs> <laughs> TCU gets a 60-yard touchdown pass uh, Unbelievable. from, from uh, Trevon Boykin to Ladarius Brown. And then, you know, they drive the length of the field to take a field goal from uh, Jaden... Um, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot the young man's name. The well, he kicked about 20 field goals today, <laughs> so he did really well. <laughs> Excuse me, had six field goals. but So that was the, the key thing. You're heading into overtime, and, and you throw all the wind is out of your sails, and then TCU scores on its first right. overtime possession. But somehow Tech kept fine. They come back, they score that touchdown. Second overtime, they score on a reverse pass. Oh, my goodness, it a, finally a brilliant worked. brilliant <laughs> play, wide open, uh, first play of the game. And so, you know, now the pressure's on TCU. They come back in the second overtime. They get a touchdown on a beautifully executed screen pass. The TCU, or I'm sorry, the Tech defense on that third overtime finally stepped Gets up. Gets a stop, really a huge to. stop. Of course, of course, he made the field goal. Exactly. His sixth, uh, setting a score record. But then Seth Deggy career high seventh touchdown pass to Torres and that's how it got it done just an unbelievable game you know and let's talk let's close out by talking implications obviously the big one Texas Tech is bowl eligible they're going to go to the postseason has to be a huge relief for these kids and the fans and people around the program and as we speak right now Kansas State very much in control of West Virginia this is setting up a monstrous Big 12 game next week in Manhattan Kansas yeah you know uh, Tech Tech will move into the top 15 after a win like this um, Kansas State is going to be ranked you know top top four top three somewhere right. in that region and so um, absolutely a monster game up there in Manhattan next week, uh, and I'm sure everybody can't wait for that one. But it was kind of funny. Nobody really got to ask Tuberville about being bowl eligible because bowl eligible because in his opening remarks he said, don't ask me about being bowl eligible. That's great. We're happy about that. But we have so much more that we want to accomplish. It is a relief to kind of get that out of your system. And, you know, heading into the season, we probably definitely did not think that would be accomplished this early in no, the year. No, we did not. Um, so for them to have that out of the way, that's great. Uh, that's, that's good for the fan base. But this team, um, starting to put together what looks like a really special season, and, and their, their sights are set much higher than, than a bowl game. So it's going to be interesting the way the rest of this thing plays out. And how it's going to play out right now is we have a ton of work to do. <laughs> we have to get inside. Don's in there writing his happy little uh, self off right now. Nick's going to get to work. We're going to have full coverage of Texas Tech's win over TCU, and we'll start getting you prepped for Texas Tech and Kansas State. You know where you're going for all their stories, all our videos and photos. LubbockOnline.com, RedRaiders.com. We're going to have you locked in the rest of the year with all you need to know. And right now we're going to wrap it up, Nick. That's going to do it for a very exciting <laughs> postgame, uh, the UMC Health System Avalanche Journal postgame show. For Nick Cosmider, I'm Zach Long. We'll see you next time.